as always, you want to keep everything great about One Piece airing, want to keep anime wins going, best way to do that is using the links below like Patreon, tons of rewards in exchange, hopefully see you there. <laughs> I just felt like that line from Sanji was totally worth a win before the episode proper started. Shows how much he cares. Love her resolve. Just prior, she says there's no way I can stand up to him in a fight. But she has no intentions of staying on the ship either and so must do something. This totally goes back to that earlier win when they first arrived up here, where I mentioned how sometimes one member can take charge. He's doing that here and showing his own resolve. Usopp really is king when it comes to gizmos. Only he could rustle up something like this to climb up the ship. I'm not a fan of heights, so I must admit, once they got back onto solid footing, I felt it needed a win. Such an easy job he has of making the tone serious all of a sudden, like he thinks that all three of them are now unlikely to make it off this ship. <laughs> Really glad having said that though, that he totally broke the tension with that statement. <laughs> Nami doing an awesome dodge there! A real good start to her battle! Also though, Nami's still looking awesome in general. You take that wing, girl! <laughs> He's so far still such an anti-anime villain. It's so rare that someone points out, just because help is on its way doesn't mean I have to wait for them, I can attack you in the meanwhile. <laughs> Those sounds he's making. But more importantly, you can see how creepy this would be from his point of view. There's literally no one around and he's sprinting inside a huge ship. Oh my sweet darling Robin, you truly are the best aren't you? What a stupidly creative ability when you can use it like this to transport the wounded! So many people animated running though! <laughs> Look at just these two scenes of people trying to flee and both images are absolutely packed with detail. <laughs> I like this old man because he's thinking about all of his people. He's right, they're our warriors, not children. And also, he accepts the coming destruction too. <laughs> Bruh, they must have animated like 30 characters moving around the screen just there. <laughs> So happy that they're both giving one another so much love and comfort during these difficult times. Oh no, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I really hope he'll be okay, but I'm glad she's now like this with what was initially her enemy to her mind. Two wins, firstly Luffy is okay, again we always know that'll be the case, but it never stops it being a win. But also, I couldn't get over her saying, what kind of fool did you have? Yes. Luffy looking proper hench! <laughs> Usopp really outdid himself when he created this weapon for Nami in the last saga. Surprisingly, it's Usopp to the rescue there. That's a solid twist as he lands an equally solid hit. It's <laughs> so unexpected. <laughs> as funny as the last win was, this is where he stands out for me. Choosing to take a step forwards into danger to do what is right by the crew. Help me. Help me. 
I missed him so much for stuff like this and two wins back. He's one of my favorite crew members for comedy value. You know what? Take another here as well, because saying this has made me think. It's been genuinely nice to hyper-focus on other characters since Chopper, Robin, Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp were taken out. Visually, this has looked good since the start, but it makes me think. If they didn't nail the sounds, it wouldn't hit hard as a big attack, so well done for that. Too long to show, but both of them show some serious smarts here. Firstly, Usopp tells her to stay near an important part of the ship, and she says they may be able to make it safely down below. <laughs> this was looking to be a beautiful performance before that hit at the end. <laughs> Not even kidding around, this is legit the kind of thing I personally react to as well. Makes me grip my finger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought he meant when he hit into the side of the boat two wins back. Not some mental attack on him. His reaction to it as well. The fact that he can fly using his power. That knockdown landing in animation though. The best thing about this for me is that she was toted as already being a natural when using these things. So of course she's this good at using it here like this. <laughs> this right here is anti-anime yet again. Full of them, this saga. How many anime does a hero come back from a bashing to get badly hurt right away again? None I can think of anyway. <laughs> Such a clever but more importantly beautiful mixture, having him walking towards her and that music playing at the same time. It's something so simple but at the same time so agonizing, that's how fast he is that he can play games by dropping his hand back down out of reach. Two Max wins, Sanji leaping in to save them both, happily putting his life on the line for them to get away from there, and taking that huge blast again directly. <coughs> That's great too, because if you're like me, you were probably thinking they'll slowly float down there, but no, they immediately come off of it, which I think would be how it would go down. <laughs> What a true, legit, badass Sanji is, man. Taking that blast after only recovering from one, and yet he's still standing. <sighs> Was gonna include that with the last win, but no. No, you get a follow-up for that. Yeah, I didn't expect a fight from him after that, but still, it hurts to see my boys and gals getting injured, especially so soon after recovering. <laughs> oh snap! One or both of them must have done something inside the ship to cause this! <laughs> Oh, you so easily score a final win for the episode with that ending, you legends! They've done this yet again. They did it at least once in the last video, or twice, where we get the same scene, but from totally different angles, which is so sick! Ah, is there any better sight than a well-prepared Usopp using his gizmos to return back to the top for Sanji? <laughs> so much credit for whispering these lines, which you logically would. <laughs> it's another brand new and unique Usopp gadget talk. What's 
great about this is, it's exactly what he did during the ball ordeal, and he made the same mistake again. Bless Nami and her great big heart. Soon as she sees where they've fallen, she races over to them. Oh snap, Sanji really messed this place up on his way to the deck. It actually makes perfect sense that he ensured that not only could he pilot this and charge it, but also work it in case of any issues. That's clever. It's a weird win I don't think I've ever given to a One Piece, but how they don't talk through the side of their face like some anime, instead you can see straight through, I much prefer that. Really appreciate being given a much greater understanding of where everyone else is, and here we can see where Robin went down into the city proper earlier on. <coughs> running on the spot whilst dragging a giant ball of solid gold through ancient ruins. <laughs> she kind of reminds me of a young Nami when she reacts like this, unless she picked it up from her. <laughs> it's nice to see more of the human side to things, like here, about someone who doesn't want their home to disappear. She mourns the loss of home rather than fleeing for her life. You gotta love it! Nothing gives Luffy more motivation than what just happened and things like it. I know he drops them off and keeps going, but it's great that everyone is linking back up, likely soon to be followed up by Nami and the lads too. A natural reaction that I'm glad was included, given that she's not yet seen her power. Another awesome example of outdated information, given that she thought Nami was still on the ship. I legit thought she only had a unique name for Zoro, but no, it's for everyone. Now that reaction is one of excellent character growth. Now that she's come to know all of them, she trusts them and relies upon them. It's very sweet to see. Nami has been so incredibly brave this saga, putting herself forwards to go back up there after Luffy. Yet another hugely widescreen scene with so many boats on it, all done by hand. They keep on animating people they didn't have to! Many such scenes were done during the previous saga, glad that was continued here as we continue to see the fleeing attempt. And now we're seeing how the whole plan has been put into action and on such a huge scale no less. Giving another one there because as sad as it is, that level of badass looking destruction and how he looked when he did it, it's sick. He's bad, but it looked sick, you know? I just felt like that was a nice touch to pay homage to their history there. Good to see him back up again, but I hope this time he's not needlessly fighting our boys and gals again. Heck yes, everyone but Sanji and Chopper is now back awake. Let's go! I'm sorry, it's yet another case of them ending the episode at the perfect point in time. You keep doing it, you'll keep getting wins. I swear there's so many thumbnail worthy shots in this saga. This one is another prime example of that rule. <laughs> All of these villagers looking different to one another. You keep doing that and you'll keep getting wins. My god, talking about awesome looking imagery. 
一人の親友がいたのだそうだ400年前カルガラの元を訪れた彼の名は Whilst I was gonna wait for the reveal and win it, I was interrupted by this great looking rotating shot from a young to older wiper, so quick win for that! Monblan Norland! Ah, nice reveal that deserves its own win. The fabled man from the books brought full circle yet again. Good job using some of the CGI techniques that had been used in the movies to great effect. Oh my word, someone described as a monster from that village in the sky who can throw something like that? I'm hyped! Man, what an insanely easy battle of this dude to have won. Looks so awesome, too! I really must say, it's so awesome of Oda to give us stories from 400 years ago, before the land was blasted into the sky. These are the pirates and crews of old. Oh, I can so already tell that he's the man from the book, years later called a liar through no fault of his own. My god, it's beautiful how it's come full circle. And this is the man who was mockingly drawn on the book about his tales as a small, laughable figure, but in reality, he was this huge, imposing and brave warrior of the sea. Amazing. So it was the distant sounds of the bell that he spoke of in his diary that brought them to the land back then. I'm not gonna lie, this went from being my least favorite law to my most. Shows the kinds of people they used to be, very fitting with the whole Mayan vibe we get from the buildings in the capital. <laughs> Three wins here, firstly not walking on the spot, again when they didn't have to do it this way. Secondly, kawaii. Thirdly, a mother's very realistic reaction to her daughter's life being given up. <laughs> Feels like one of the darker moments I like so much in this one. Like with the old man who saved Sanji. He's battering his arm, attempting to rid his skin of the disease. You can really hear that that's the voice of the old orc in Tenshura, the slime anime? The guy who trains the spies and whatnot? Even back here he sounded much the same. Really glad I said pirates and crews earlier on. They're clearly not pirates, given what he just said. So if you were confused when I said and crews, I meant everyone not a pirate. I cut a little out there, but I wanted to show the depth of the chimes. It speaks to how large it must be and how grand it likely is too. Two wins. Firstly, it's nice to see that they came in peace to this land, where everyone before it was looking to loot it, I'd presume, based on the earlier attempted fleeing. But also, I love the lore that they, being well-traveled, have seen this sickness and know how to treat it. Yet they're just sacrificing their people, over 100 to rid themselves of it. As they further the lore by speaking of injecting the boy and themselves with the cure, we then get to see more of their unique looking buildings. Yet again, nothing like it before. Talking about excellent lore, I'm sure this is the place where the Going Merry was put when it was taken. Max wins! Firstly, because he proved himself to be a true hero by diving in to save her without a moment's hesitation, but also because they used cracking good CGI, again from the fourth movie style.
That's fantastic, because in my head I thought she was shaking with anger, but no, she's just happy to be alive. It was like a facade to make her mother more okay with it happening. Amazing! The sheer size of that place is well represented by seeing them on the outside down below when they're all up on the top viewing. Right away we see how strong he is to block an attack from someone who wrecked an entire ship and its crew with ease. Little too much to show, but he risks his life to again stop her from taking her life and is thus attacked from behind. Not only is it a great speech, made even better by one of the best tracks in all of One Piece, but what he's saying makes total sense too, about the people who risked their lives to research this stuff. He really is such a legend, not asking for gold or riches. He's asking that should he find success, they never again do away with one of their own people like this. Lore-wise, I'm glad it was a village chief who made this call and not the main warrior of legend. Makes more sense. Yet more realism, it makes total sense that she, having gone against their rules, is now being locked up too. He thought of everything, I swear! Not walking on the spot, from a distance too, but what stands out just as much is that in spite of his work, he's that good with a sword. Guy's an absolute beast, really. You'll soon be bored of me saying it, but realism. That they'd met like this to go over the issues from the day and question why certain calls were made, rather than skipping to the cure. He stands out for me because unlike the last guy, he's not claiming to hear God. Instead, he's relying on himself and his best judgment to lead them now. He's being honest. Love that. Heck yes, the reveal that the boy is being cured! Let's go! <laughs> totally unexpected plot twist. I figured he'd just go off and cure them and that's it. But no! You didn't have to do it though! <laughs> Could this dude be a bigger legend? Even in this position, he's throwing sass! <laughs> What's that I hear you yelling? Realism! Yeah, that's right. There's been an earthquake following the last day's events. Naturally, they'd be after their heads regardless of what anyone says. Half the win is for this lad stepping in to prevent those who aided him, and the other half is because this is a new trend right now of piling in more content before the episode even starts properly. He pretty much said the win for me just then. What I love about this guy is that he speaks nothing but sense and logic really, because he is a man of learning and reason. So doing the entire crew isn't enough for them at this point, they also still want to do her as well! That's a twist and a half, shows how much he means to him via his voice acting too. Obviously he felt he had to do it for the greater good and all, but still. Dropping a brilliant piece of lore there, which explains how the cure is now so readily available, because their own people were hit hard by it 60 years earlier. Now it makes things all the more painful that his hand is stuck down there, since it's grabbing a hold of the cure they need. 
Can't show too much, but I wanted to highlight that again. He's saying people gave everything they had to create this cure. So many died along the way, and you're spitting on that. Him trusting finally and stepping in, his final words swaying him. Is it a curse or is it a disease? Am I going to perish here in an act of God or simply just an accident? They then take the last win even further by him going against hundreds of years of tradition to save an outsider who might be telling the truth about their whole way of life. Brilliant. That's way too good to not get another win. Amazing voice acting, tears streaming, likely thinking of the life of his daughter and everyone else being saved. He's almost pleading. nearly brought a tear to my eye. He trusted him. They used the cure and everyone was saved, including his daughter. That's so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> a quick scene that shows two things. Firstly, that they became fast friends afterwards, but also that he sees things his way by referring to it as a snake here. So much extra animation, though. <laughs> oh yeah, with everything that happened once they got there, I forgot about the bell. Well played. <laughs> to be honest, no matter what, I was going to include whatever came up with the last win. So it's the bell, then the view, and then I saw this. And I was so blown away, I felt it deserved max wins. You want to give me a bird's eye view of this place? You get a win, baby! I really am lost for words. It's the scale and importance of it that wasn't even done justice by everything Robin and the others have said when describing it. It's so awesome! That's a pretty amazing and unexpected twist, allowing them to take gold. But to his credit, he was going to stop them and they'd listen to him, and rightfully so. <laughs> this is the most treasure looking treasure since the end of the second test to become a mage in Furen. <laughs> Seeing the exact area that means the most to Robin, what she's been talking about all this time. How can the law keep on getting better and better? This was 400 years ago, yet their ancestors didn't build the bell, meaning it's even older than that still. For context, he says we do this to honor our ancestors and then follows up with this. I just thought that was a beautiful custom thought up by Oda to get its own win. That end view and his words about the bell saved their lives. Oda really did create something wonderful this saga to my mind, I swear. Seeing the map Nami used and the clue she figured out and then how the whole land mass originally looked. The gorgeous moment showing how they grew closer over time, sharing their own things with them, and further helping one another, and it's only helped by that gorgeous music that hits my heart. Was really happy to just see the baby snake chilling with them here. Oda is such a storytelling legend. All we've seen during the montage was someone hacking at a tree. Now suddenly they're all talking like this and we have no idea why. 
Instead of getting angry like his crew has, he takes the high road. I tell you, the more I learn about this guy, the more of a serious impact he has on me. At the same time, showing how these recent events have deeply hurt him. Everything changed in an instant and he doesn't know why and it obviously plagues him as it would anyone. The end of the episode scores a win as the two potentially face off. Nolan is injured slightly to the face but sits, looking determined not to leave. This is the best flashback ever for me. The realism of this all being discussed by the crew, especially heartfelt, is how they talk about their leader losing a good friend in the process. Credit to the animators for keeping the damage on his face. Ah, so that's what it was. It felt like one tree, but not this many. But the question now is, were they the ones doing it or not? Great mystery, so well done. Not just saying the trees are sacred and leaving it at that, but going further by including the reason why the bell is rung and how it relates to the trees. Ah, uh, okay, so it was them in the end. Shame no one told them not to do it though, could have avoided it then. Great job by the voice actor to display his extreme anger at himself for allowing this to happen. He's so hurt at having caused that damage to their relationship and his friendship. <laughs> Makes perfect sense that he would do this, and I'm all for it personally. It seems like the right and just thing to do, and of course nicely ties into the fact that we know he wasn't rich. Obviously, they should have spoken to them first, but now this does make so much more sense to me. They did it to protect them, and they were already dead trees. Just an amazing twist. My god, I cannot properly express how much I've adored this entire backstory. It's created what may be my favorite saga yet, all in all. I'm in awe of the storytelling, man. I must admit the length they're going to to stop them leaving like this is breaking my heart. It finally happened. You brought a solid tear to my eye with that, especially seeing him tear up and yet he never laughed, never really showed any emotions and now he's crying. Also, I can't go ignoring the art style change they used on all these memories too. If two winds back broke the pipes, this one opened the floodgates. Totally wrecked me, this dude. What a beautiful moment between them. Even more so, Nolan saying, I can come back. Take Max wins to end this moment between them. Really got to me, I gotta say. Yet another art style change to make the characters look realistic within what looks like a children's book setting. <laughs> The world government taking five years to allow them to travel to the Grand Line sounds like a decent piece of law. It literally just keeps getting better. This is now years later, just prior to the explosion into the sky. Noland is on his way back, and look how Seto has aged. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, Nora. This is so the snake from before, isn't it? 
I'm very much guessing that this here is the cause of its joy and shock upon re-entering the city before Ineru shocked it. It's so sad knowing that, I'm presuming, they never did get to see one another again, and both of them were much worse off for it too, especially Noland and what happened to him. Two wins here, firstly damage effect animators out of play right here. Also though, how awesome I found it to see everything as it happened all those years ago. Such as the house being split in half. The voice actor nailed that role for the king, just purely revealing his greed there. Showing the whole fake trial, clearly using a fake to pose as his crew member to lie, yet as the book states, he was up there still telling the truth at the time. My word, you don't see crowds like that anymore, do you? Imagine the work that was poured by someone into this moment. That is insane. Take my win. Brilliant sweeping shot. Easy win for seeing the entire wedge of land come crashing down up there too. And thus we see both how the bell got detached from the city in the first place, but also how it rang up there too. Seeing how the god of the time chose to invade, for me it served to further expand the lore too. Naturally, and very sadly, the same thing that hit Luffy and the crew so hard allowed for their enemies to take out even someone as strong as him. They can have another for giving me such a strong feeling in my heart for them, now knowing what they fought for because it's all been explained to me. I'm proud to know them. I swear I teared up so much, I, I had to stop and wipe them away for a minute before carrying on, just knowing the two friends couldn't see each other again and both died. Oh! A young wiper was very empathetic of an outsider like Noland back then, and it broke my heart how he cried, knowing no matter what, it was too late for Noland. It's horrible to see, but the huge scale of destruction looks incredible from this distance. Stupidly great looking zooming out shot. I cannot impress upon you how many of these they've done this saga over the other two. It's nice that, hopefully not, but that one of his final thoughts must have been about Connors and her well being. <laughs> Bless the animators, and I mean that, for all of these fantastic looking fully zoomed out shots. I mean, look at the detail there. You can almost see everything. <laughs> Seeing his destruction as he rises higher up, just prior to this he wrecked some of the fleeing boats too, sadly, and now God's Shrine and sadly Shandora. Two more awesome looking high up views I gotta drop a win for. Not running on the great ending spot! Yet another pre episode start different view of something. Usopp makes every situation more funny when he's like this. 
遺跡で見つけた地図に記されていたわ。You gotta love how calm Robin is at a time like this where panic is touching most people. Also, Zoro and Wiper are pretty damn calm too, and Gan. All very calm legends. No way am I not giving him a win for that. Odi keeps revealing things and I 99% get it, and then he does this, which explains the final 1%. The bell was right in the middle, that's why it got knocked out and away. My respect for Luffy only continues to grow more and more when we're faced with his dedication as shown here. He just super reinforced the previous win! Back to back Max wins. Firstly here, it's for the biggest anti-anime moment this saga. Luffy heading up there, gets near him, gets knocked back, I'm guessing nearly all the way back down. Secondly, it's for this, the reveal that their final goal was to get the bell, and I'm very much assuming it was to bring it for Noland, as wanted by Kalgura all those years ago. I'm stunned. I continue to be in absolute awe of these visual set pieces, done from such a long distance away as Ineru bolted off into the distance to do something, maybe more damage? I can already tell what he's going to do and I'm freaking out. They can have a win in advance, so I don't even care. It actually worked fairly nicely and got him up another level again. Plus, Nami is arriving. Easy follow up win if there ever was one. Some of it is likely repeated animation, but not all of it. So, kudos again to how much animation there is. Uda coming along and giving him yet another new attack, and it's a huge one! Even more animation they didn't have to animate! My god, it's like gone off like an electronic nuke or something! Their collective reactions being ones of sadness for the White Berets, and also sadness for the homes and friends being lost in that blast. This is perhaps the biggest shock to me, is how he's entirely destroyed even the clouds themselves. Meaning if he did that enough, he really would destroy all land up there. Really profound looking reaction from Gan as well, and backed up nicely by his voice acting performance in a scene likely ripped right out of the manga pages. Bless her, even when her life is at risk, by staying there she wants to follow through on her and her father's original wishes to see them safely back down. Oh, I really love it when the wind just does its thing naturally. Hearing this from Nami felt quite profound given her love for all things money related, shows how much she values his life and the crew's. Cannot tell you how much I adore that this is his primary reason for fighting right now. Luffy and this music totally got me emotional again with that, proving that he did not lie back then. Oh, I love him so much. Take another win for that. Totally got to me in the end. 
鐘を鳴らしたらよ谷にいる日がたのおっさんや錆びた声ねっけだ<笑> Even better for me was knowing that he developed that plan what is likely an hour or so ago. Not right now. Ah, How well they all know Luffy at this point that even Robin, just prior to this, said pretty much the same thing about him. Goodness me, he really is something else, isn't he? Hearing his plan for the first time, how he wants everything back as it should be, basically. First time I've heard that, but mostly it's the wicked looking animation on him as he says it. <laughs> Luffy is super motivated now! <laughs> I can't even with this anime, he's not back down again and freaking again! Too long to show, but Max wins. Great ending, awesome voice acting, art style change to brilliant stuff. Darth Weirdo, Fiji, Nick Wyndham, The Element Taylor Wars, Christopher Willis, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Fancy Turtle, Kepa, Mini Masher, Marquez, Nozomi, Orkeeper, Otar Bananisi, Steelers, The Epic Commander, Bird Without a Word, Brandon Creer, Brian Bayard, Cameron, Christian Tawasa, Commander Cyrus, David Mayer Olmos, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Aaron Winters, Guru Guru, James Tafoya, Jor Edvinson, Kevin Halston, Comfroik, Kylie Welp, Luis Benito, Mr. Mansu, Knightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Ruby Rose, Satoko Yari, Zyogs 44, Sean, Starkip, The 100s, Tiger Lily Warrior, A Joker, Alexander Schwartz, Ali 50, Amadillo, Brainless Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Garden, Dante Soul, Dante Space, Dark Bloody Soul, Devon, Dragon Defender, Iso, Francie, Garrett Vamish, Gibbs, Hoved Lowe's Ritter, Hunter Miranda, Isel Caldera, Jason Davies, John John, Jaffa6263, Kai Wolfspring, Kelnock, Kevin Nelta, Kevin 102, Knuckle Duster, Kai 158, Kyle Jones, Laxor, Laxus, Liam Gugatti, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Marvin, Matthew Blancet, Michael Lewis, Motivirum, Moudini, Mr. Fire Cool, Nathaniel Gregamosa, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, Novagaum, 9028, Ollie the Mighty, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Oscar I. Lopez, Owen Haloran, Q Flash, Chris Harris, Ryan DeVeries, Psychomi Aorum, Sarcastic Truth, Snowy, Stan, Storm 970, TRS, Thrasher 340, Will Sass, Willyman.